This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather Ho there, Chef Cutter Diamond. Welcome you to another sports catastrophe on this day. And on this day, October the 15th, in the year 1969, Game 4 of the 1969 World Series happened. Now, if you're a fan of sports catastrophe, you know that I did video on Game 5 when the Mets won the World Series. Of course, this is Game 4 when the Mets did not win the World Series, but the ending was one of the most controversial and awkward in history. Well, anyway, here's what happened. So it's a Wednesday afternoon at Shea Stadium. The World Series still was being played all in the afternoon. In 69, the Mets shocked everyone by winning the National League pennant. It was shocking because the Mets had never been that high up on the NL standings. And with the two division format, the Mets were expected to do poorly. Maybe even be challenged by the expansion Montreal Expos for worse than the West East. Well, Montreal did only win 52 games that year. But the Mets shocked a lot of people by winning 100 in the regular season and overtaking the Cubs with a furious September push. The Cubs were a tough team back then. Anyway, the Mets knew what they had to do and they beat the Braves in the first NLCS. So the East Champion Mets took out the West Champion Braves. And that's what happened. Anyway, um, the the, the Mets would take on the powerhouse Baltimore Orioles with 109 wins, and people thought Baltimore was going to cream the Mets, especially with Baltimore being a decent team in the 60s, and the Mets pulling off the impossible dream, if you will. The Orioles won Game 1 of the World Series 4-1, and everyone thought it was business as usual. But Game 2 saw the Mets win a pitcher's duel 2-1, and then shut out the Orioles 5-0. Game 4 would see... A couple of key catches by both Ron Sabota and Tommy Agee to rob the Orioles of massive hits. People forget about that too. Regardless, the Orioles starting lineup was this. Don Buford in left, Paul Blair center, Frank Robinson right field, Book Powell first, Brooks Robinson third, recently deceased, Aaron Hendricks catcher, Davey Johnson at second, Mark Belanger at short. Well, they call it Belanger. I say Belanger because of my Canadian accent. And by Cuellar, the pitcher. Although his name kind of looks like cellular. The Mets had Tommy Agee center field, Bud Harrelson short, Cleo Jones left, Don Clendenden at first, Ron Zabona right field, Ed Charles third, Jerry Groot catching, Al Weiss at second, and Tom Seaver being the starting pitcher. Nothing much happened until the bottom of the second when Don Clendenden, who was going to be a Montreal Expo, after a trade, but he refused to go to Montreal, and then the Expos had to trade him away to the Mets, if I remember starts to be right. But anyway, no, he was trying to trade him to the Mets, but it worked out in Clendenden's favor, and he hits a home run to left field, one to nothing. Not the first or last time Clendenden would hit a home run. It would be a battle royale pitching between Seaver and Cuellar. For the longest time. Unfortunately, though, in the middle innings, Earl Weaver was upset over the home plate umpire. Was that Shane Crawford? Yeah, Shane Crawford and his calls. So basically, Weaver was given the heave ho. In fact, Weaver was the first manager in World Series history to be ejected from a game. Not the last, but the first. It was Earl Weaver. The Orioles were fighting. It was one nothing through eight innings. That's, it was just Seaver and Cuellar. Well, Eddie White came in for the eighth of the Orioles. Seaver went out for the ninth, gave up a fly ball out to Paul Blair. Not bad. And then Frank Robinson hit a single to left. Boog Powell hit a single to right. Robinson gets to third base. So it's up to Brooks Robinson. A sack fly would tie the game at one. But anyway, he hit one to right field. And Sabota 
makes this amazing diving catch. The ball was going to go past him. He makes the diving catch. He doesn't have enough in him to pop up and throw Frank Robinson out. So Frank Robinson scores. We are tied at one. But Sabota's catch is huge because it saved Boo Powell from moving past first base. And didn't get Brooks on base. Baltimore would get the third out as Ellie Hendricks lined out to right. Tie game. In the bottom of the ninth, Eddie White was still on the mound. Harrelson grounded out. Cleon Jones singled. Don Clendenin whiffed. And Rod Sabota singled. And then Art Shamsky came in to pinch hit with runners on first and third. Grand ball out. Ten inning, while Wayne Garrett became third base. Ten inning, Davey Johnson reached on an error by Wayne Garrett to first base. Mike Belong. Belanger popped foul. Baltimore went with pinch hitter Clay Durbrell, who singled first and second. Don Buford came to the plate and flouted out the right. Davey Johnson went to third, but Paul Blair struck out, and Seaver got the out. So now it's bottom of the tent. Dick Hall would come in to pitch. He would face Jerry Grote, who hit a pop fly double. Rod Gaspar would be the pit, pinch runner for Grody. Al Weiss would be intentionally walked to go with Seaver, but the Mets knew they had to go with the pinch hitter. They went with Pete Richard to pitch to J.C. Martin. J.C. Martin was the backup catcher who was going to come in for Grody. Anyway, on a pitch, he decided to sacrifice Bunt. And he was running down the first base line when Richard was trying to throw him out at first base with no chance to get Weiss. But somehow, in some way, the ball hit J.C. Martin square in the back and rolled away. Gaspar raced around the bases and scored the winning run. It was no RBI, but it doesn't matter as J.C. Martin is the hero and the Mets win 2-1. to one. What an ending for the Mets to go up three games to one in the World Series. One tiny problem though, there was a controversy because J.C. Martin allegedly ran inside the baseline. Now at first base, you have kind of two lines going from home plate to first base. And what happened is that apparently J.C. Martin was running to the left of the lines, which you can't do because that's in play and you could interfere with a thrown ball or a play and all that. The replays did show he kind of did go left to the left, like he was in the wrong lane. If it was to the right, it would be in the runner's lane. And then if he got hit, then that's on the pitcher's fault. But no, it seemed like he ran inside the baseline, which is against the rules. It should have been batter's interference. He would have been out. And then they would have probably sent Gaspar back to second base. But yeah, that was pathetic. I mean, I kind of get what the Orioles were saying. And of course, Earl Weaver couldn't argue it because he was tossed. So the umpires made the mistake. Of course, we have instant replay, but, you know, I think that he, he ran inside the baseline. J.C. Martin screwed everything up and that's why the Orioles lost the game but what's worse to come is that the Mets actually were choking in game five but then Clendenin hit a major home run the Mets win 5-3 if I'm supposed to be right if that was the score and win game five let me take a look I'm not sure about the score sometimes I make a mistake and the score was yeah it was 5-3 I was right 5-3 Mets I feel bad for the Orioles, although they did go to the 1970 World Series and won the World Series, and the Mets would not get back to the World Series until 1973. I, it's funny how the Mets in 69 were a miracle Mets, and then in 73, they somehow took advantage of a packed NL East, and with a record of 83 and 78, won the World, won the East, won the, the LCS against the Reds, and got to the World Series where they would take on those pesky Oakland A's who beat them in seven games. So the Mets almost did another comeback and all that. But you know what? Baltimore got its World Series. Brooks Robinson got his stuff. But yeah, J.C. Martin did do wrong. I'll say that much. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do 